In this video, I will demonstrate a technique that is used to replace missing data called expectation maximization. Now, a major assumption of the expectation maximization technique is that the data are missing randomly. So one of the techniques we use to determine if data is missing randomly is to perform Little's MCAR test, which I demonstrate in another video. But what expectation maximization or EM techniques do is it forms a, a missing data correlation by assuming the shape of a distribution such as a normal distribution for the partially missing data and then basing some inferences about the values that are missing on the likelihood that they would be there under that distribution. So it's an iterative approach with two steps, expectation and maximization, for each iteration or each go-round as it attempts to predict what the values should be. So the E step, the expectation step, finds the conditional expectation of missing data given the observed values and some estimates of parameters such as correlations. And then these expectations are then substituted for the missing data. The second step, the maximization step, performs maximum likelihood estimations um, as though the missing data had been filled in. So it looks for a model that seems to fit the best and it keeps trying to find that model until it has convergence, until it's reached what it appears to be the most appropriate model. And then this uh, filled in data is saved um, in a separate data set. Now a drawback to the EM technique is that it tends to be biased biased because error isn't added to the, to the newly created data set. So the analysis based on the data set has inappropriate standard errors, so it's inappropriate for testing hypotheses. And so the bias is greatest when the data set with imputed values, is, is, with imputed values filled in is analyzed using inferential techniques. So expectation maximization data can be utilized but is not recommended to be utilized for inferential techniques. So it tends to be most appropriate for exploratory analysis. Um, you can use EM imputed data for inferential techniques as long as the amounts of missing data are very small, usually less than 2%, uh, but you also have to interpret those inferential results with, with a lot of caution with, with, to make sure that you're not making a, an assumption that that is not appropriate because of the inappropriate or biased errors that are present. Okay, so to show you how to do this technique, what I have here is some uh, survey data that has, has missing values. Uh, we've got quantitative as well as categorical outcomes here in this missing data. And so in order to do perform this technique, we need to go to the Analyze menu and go to Missing Value Analysis. Now the first step in the analysis is to move the variables that we want to analyze for missingness or which we want to replace the missing data for are moved into our right hand boxes. So variables like sex that are categorical needs to be moved into the categorical variables box. And then numeric outcomes like age, uh, family income, and grade point average can be moved into the quantitative variables box. Now the next thing we need to do is choose the technique we want to use to replace the missing data, and we're going to choose the EM technique. The next thing we need to do is go to descriptives. And one of the things that we're going to ask for uh, are t-tests that will help us determine if variables are missing in a random way or if they're missing systematically and what other variables might predict which variables have missing data. So for example, if it turns out that one of the two genders, males versus females, are not answering a particular question more often than the other, so maybe females are answering the question on age at a much lesser rate than males, then this will help us determine if that's the case. So it'll help us determine if there are any systematic patterns to why data might be missing. So we click that box for t-tests and then also include probabilities in the table so we can make a decision is this happening at a p-value of less than 0.01 or less than 0.05. And we click continue. And now we click on the EM button and this will help us set some of the parameters for the actual replacement of the missing data using the EM technique. 
Now, typically we ask for the distribution of data to be normal, assuming that the data we had previously been working with is normal. We can ask for a certain number of iterations. In other words, how many attempts will the program make at trying to get this, this uh, best fit data to replace the missing data. And then we can ask for it to save the completed data in a new data set. And we typically will name that something uh, different than your original data set because that's going to produce a whole new data file for us. And so we're going to name this new to keep it simple. All right, once that's, once that's completed, go ahead and click Continue. And then we click OK. So the first table we can look at has to do with uh, kind of descriptive statistics of the variables that we're interested in. So one of the things we can notice from this, it'll give us a percentage of missing. So what percentage of the total number of data points are missing? And you can see all of these are somewhere in that 45 to 5% range. Now the next table we can look at are the t-tests, the separate variance t-tests. And this will give us an indication of whether or not there are relationships between the data that are missing in certain outcomes and other variables. And so what we look for is we look at the third row here where it says p, and this is a p-value. If these p-values are less than 0.05, then that would indicate that there are some systematic differences in the missing outcomes. In other words, there are predictors for why the data is missing. In this case, both of our p-values are greater than 0.05, so there doesn't appear to be any systematic predictors of missing data using our other outcome variables. Now another way we have of determining if data is missing at random or non-random, it appears right now that it's not missing systematically, that it is missing at random, is we can also go down to the EMs, EM means box and we can look at Little's MCAR test. And again, if this significance is greater than 0.05, then that would indicate to me that the data is missing at random. So in this case, this is greater than 0.05, it's 0.717. So we can feel comfortable looking at this value as well as the t-test results that the data is truly missing at random and doing the estimation maximization technique is appropriate. Because remember, that's an assumption of this technique is the data has to be missing randomly. And so it appears that it is missing randomly, so we can use this technique to replace that data. Now to see the data that's, that's been created for us to replace data, we have to open up the brand new file that's been created for us. And you can see here it's got our title, new. So we can open that up and we can see our four variables now with the missing data replaced. But again, as I mentioned earlier, this is, this is data I'd be very careful and probably would not be doing inferential testing on, we had missing data close to that 5% range for all of these variables. And so if you're going to do inferential testing, I would not recommend it, but if you are going to do it, I would be very, very suspect of whatever conclusion that you're going to make. Now, if that missing data had been more in that 2% or less range, then I would still feel comfortable um, potentially doing this uh, inferential statistics on this data that's been replaced. So to, to summarize, we learned how to do the expectation maximization technique to replace missing data. And again, this technique is typically used if we can be fairly well assured that the data is missing at random. It is not highly, highly recommended to use this replace data in inferential testing, but it can be used in situations in which the amount of data that's missing is, is very small as a proportion of the whole amount of data that you've collected. So hopefully you've learned something from this technique and good luck in using this technique in your own research.